Before we understand phase changes, let's understand the names of each transition. When a solid becomes a liquid, we call it as a fusion. And when a liquid becomes a gas, we call it evaporation. And solid becomes a gas, we call it sublimation. So in this case, the solid doesn't go into the liquid state. It goes directly into the gas state. And uh, the opposite of all of them, when the liquid becomes a solid, we call we are freezing it. And when a gas becomes a liquid, it's condensation. And when a gas goes into a solid directly, we call it deposition. Now we are going to consider how does a phase change as temperature changes. So let's plot a graph and uh, y axis. I started with the y axis, then I have an x axis. So what are the things we have on these? We'll represent temperature at the y axis, and the x axis we are going to take up heat. So and represented as Q. On the graph, let's point, mark two points: the one, the zero degree Celsius the melting point of uh, ice and then another point at the top the 100 degree celsius that's the boiling point of water so based on this let us see suppose i'm uh, converting ice which is at below zero degree celsius and i uh, i start heating it so you can see that the temperature will increase and then uh, the ice which is in the solid state will reach a point at zero degree celsius at 0 degree Celsius, you can see that uh, the solid ice gets converted into liquid. So the, blue, uh, the line, blue line shows the transition, phase transition from solid to liquid. And you can notice that this is the point where the temperature doesn't change. It's a flat line. So when once all the uh, solid water or ice is got converted into liquid, the temperature starts rising again that is represented by the green line and this is the liquid phase and it keeps on a temperature keeps on increasing as you are heating and once it reaches a point this 100 degree celsius you can see that the purple line becomes flat again so this is the point where the liquid becomes the gas and again since there is a phase transition delta t will be equal to zero there is no change in temperature. I'm supplying more heat, but the temperature is not changing. So once this is done, when once all the liquid has got converted into gas, the temperature again starts increasing as represented by the orange line. So basically, we have five parts in this graph. One, the starting with solid, then solid to liquid, then liquid, liquid to gas and gas. So we need to know what are the heat in, involved in each of these five uh, transitions. The first one, when the when you are heating ice from uh, below 0 to 0, the usual formula we use will be Q equals M is delta T. The only thing is Q1, uh, here I represented it as Q1 and the specific heat of ice is used and not that of water. Then the second part where the phase transition takes place and the solid becomes a liquid, uh, basically we are fusing it. Therefore, the heat which is involved in this is delta H fusion as written over there and you have to multiply it by the number of moles. Then the green part, again it is similar to what we had in Q1. So Q3 is again ms delta T where the specific heat is specific heat of water. So then I reach the phase transition phase again when the liquid becomes a gas and this process is vaporization and therefore Q4 will be equal to number of moles times heat of vaporization. And the last stage, the red one, where you have only gases, Q5 is again equal to what we did before ms delta t with the specific heat of steam being used over there so we have five heats q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 for different stages the point to be noted over here is you see that the heat of fusion delta h fusion the flat line is much smaller than the delta h vaporization the purple line the flat line and uh, this is because 
to we need more energy to convert anything into a gas state because we have to overcome each and every intermolecular force and this is always you will find that the fusion delta h fusion is smaller than delta h vaporization so now we have the heat for each one of the line so total heat will be equal to q1 q plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 plus q5 a simple diagram the application of it with an example we will do it in the coming slide okay now let's do a question based on all these phase transfer and see what happens when i change uh, ice to steam the question is how much heat in kilojoules is required to convert 458 grams of ice at negative 25 degrees celsius to steam at 106 degrees celsius they have given you the specific heat of ice specific heat of steam specific heat of water is not given but it's a common thing we use 4.18 uh delta h fusion and delta h vaporization of water is also given so let's start doing it uh based on the diagram we just learned the step 1 is i'm converting ice at negative 25 degrees celsius to ice at 0 degrees celsius and the heat involved in this is ms delta t so substitute all the values use the specific heat of ice and the temperature changes from Negative twenty-five to zero. Zero is the final temperature. So calculate the value of Q one. Though the specific heat is in uh, joules, I want the final answer in kilojoules. Now the step two is I already have ice at zero degrees Celsius. I will convert it. There will be a phase change. I will convert it into water at zero degrees Celsius. If for the equation I use here will be. Uh, number of moles times the delta H fusion. Substitute all the values. The number of moles is calculated from the mass of ice given, dividing it by the molar mass of water. So I get the value of Q2. The value is already in kilojoules. So now I have water at zero degree Celsius. What is the next step? I'm converting this water at zero degree Celsius to water at hundred degree Celsius. so again this is the formula with the ms delta t i uh, use the appropriate value for the specific heat of water substitute all the values final temperature is 100 initial temperature is 0 so and calculate the value of q3 so we need to calculate two more we will go further and find out how to calculate q4 and q5 and then the total q continuing from the previous page just for your reference i have given the question again we calculated q1 q2 and q3 so now we have to go ahead and calculate the step 4 q4 that is to convert water at 100 degrees celsius to steam at 100 degrees celsius and um, this is again a phase transfer from liquid to gas therefore i will use the heat of vaporization multiplied with the number of moles calculated using the mass and the molar mass of water i get the value in kilojoules so i have calculated now uh, q4 now i'm left with the next one q5 in which i'm going to convert water which is already at 100 degree celsius or i can say that it's in the form of steam at 100 degree celsius to steam at 106 degree celsius so use the formula ms delta t use the appropriate uh, specific heat the specific heat of steam get the value for um, q5 and over here the final temperature is 106 initial temperature is 100 and get the value of q5 in kilojoules so now from the previous page i have q1 q2 q3 and now i have q2 and q, uh, uh, q4 and q5 add up all of them to get the q total so to convert ice at negative 25 degrees celsius to steam at uh, 106 degrees celsius the total energy required is 1.41 10 to the power of 3 kilojoules what did i do uh and then how much heat is required to convert 
5 moles of water at 95 degrees Celsius to ice at negative 8 uh, degrees Celsius. Specific heat of ice is given, a heat of fusion of ice is given. And um, so here everything, uh, I don't have to go through all the five steps. Basically, I'm starting with water and going back to ice. So my first step will be to convert water at 95 degrees Celsius to water at 0 degrees Celsius. So this is a simple equation of ms delta t. Using the specific heat of um, water, 4.18, I can get the value for Q3. I'm using the same symbol because this is the third heat which is involved. And uh, I need the mass of water. Since the moles are given, I can, using the molar mass, I convert, uh, I got the mass of water. So, I get Q3 or the heat required to convert water at 95 to water at 0. And you can see that the value is negative there because I am going from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. Now, the step 2, I have got water at 0 degree Celsius. Now, I have to convert this water at 0 degree Celsius to ice at 0 degree Celsius. And this process is basically freezing. And freezing is opposite of fusion. If delta H of fusion is given as 6.01 kilojoules per mole, delta A, um, the, Q, uh, the value of Q2, we will take it as negative because the freezing will be opposite to that of fusion. And hence Q2, to, that is to convert water at 0 degree Celsius to ice at 0 degree Celsius, Multi number of moles is given directly multiplied with the uh, negative of delta H fusion and I get the value of Q2. Now, uh, I am not at finish now. I need to convert this ice to negative 8.0 uh, degrees Celsius. So, that is step 3. Uh, again, it is uh, ms delta T equation. The number of moles are given converted into mass and they use the specific heat of uh, ice and the uh, initial temperature is uh, 0 and the final temperature is negative 8 and you said see that here also the value comes as negative and the total heat add up all the heats which we have calculated and you can see that the total heat is also negative so this process is actually opposite of what we did before before we converted from solid to liquid to gas in this case i'm doing the opposite i'm converting a liquid to a solid and um, definitely liquid becomes a solid bonds are formed and whenever bonds are formed energy is released and as we expect the value of heat is also negative let's do the last question a very easy one it just the calculate the amount of heat needed to melt 4.25 kilogram of copper at its melting point given that delta H of fusion is 205 kilojoules per kilogram. Very easy question. They have just asked you for Q. Q is number of moles times delta H fusion. But in this case, I don't even need the number of moles. The value of delta fusion is given per kilogram only. So multiplied with the mass given 4.25, the kilograms will get cancelled and the value of heat will be 871 kilojoules.